Okay. Hey, we're going to do a crystal set. You know, there's uh, there's a lot you can learn from something this simple. So the idea is to try to come up with a way to simulate headphone operation, but uh, be able to uh, let you guys experience what it's like to use a crystal radio. So I want to be able to drive this speaker. So I've got a little amplifier. It's called a Boomer. It's made by a National Semiconductor. It's about a third the size of your fingernail, much smaller than an LM386 amplifier. I've got it set for a gain of 10. And then I've got a 1.8K resistor that's going to simulate what my headphone impedance would be. And that's going to allow me to take a 10 millivolt kind of a signal and amplify it to 100 millivolts or a tenth of a volt. So uh, you can kind of see uh, how strong a signal has to be to be able to drive a speaker. So let's see what we got here. We'll tune across the dial a little bit. At the crash scene itself, more than 100 bodies still remain unaccounted for. Fox of Steve Harrigan in Donetsk, Ukraine. Western leaders So it's about seven or eight stations. That's not bad. Crystal sets have been around since the beginning of radio. And there's a lot of crystal set and uh, videos on YouTube and all around the internet. Everybody's got a great idea for building a crystal set. Uh, crystal sets uh, vary from the very simplest toy types all the way up to the most elegant multiple tuned systems. And uh, building these things can become almost a religion to some people. Well, we're not going to go there, but we are going to discuss how to make one that uh, can be built by young people and give fantastic performance. And I can tell you, if you've got a crystal set where you're picking up two or three stations right now, um, with something as simple as this, you might be able to do five or six stations and at night pick up stations thousands of miles away. So I think this is going to be a simple expose of all of the basic tricks of using and building a crystal set. Is this a practical kit experience for young people, for children? I would say the amount of work needed to build something like this for uh, 12 to 15 year olds is realistic. Being able to collect the parts may take you a few weeks, but you should be able to find uh, the magnet wire, the variable capacitor, the diodes, the fixed capacitor, and the hardware in the space of a few weeks. Parts cost. I've taken the time to go through and give you a realistic budget for this particular receiver. And this is this is going to give you the scope of what you're what you're into if you want to build this set in a group with several kids, uh, several students, several scouts. It's not a small investment. Uh, it does take real radio parts to be able to put one of these together, but the learning experience is well worth it.
The headphones are going to take a little longer to find. They will cost you a little bit, but it's well worth using the Heinpeens headphones rather than the simple crystal earpiece. We would like to have a set that is reproducible and a set that gives really good performance without adding uh, undue uh, complexity to the circuit. So uh, we're going to concentrate on the things that make the set work very well with very low effort. And we're going to start with the antenna and go all the way to the headphones and discuss each part of the crystal radio. The crystal radio or the crystal set goes back to the early days of radio. And you, uh, you have people that are fanatics about building them that are going for the highest performance all the way down to the uh, entry level crystal radios that uh, you could put inside a pen and in the 50s they would sell you this rocket pen that would have the crystal radio inside it with a little earphone. And everything in between. I remember my first crystal set was a plastic thing that came, I think it was a Remco or something like that, and it uh, was uh, kind of a poor performer. It picked up exactly one station, but it was very exciting at the time. Later on, I would get uh, Alfred Morgan's uh, Boy's First Book of Radio and Electronics and uh, explore some of the crystal sets in that book. And in high school, we built uh, Navy Couplers, which is a, a huge uh, crystal set, very complex to build uh, to like a 1912 plan. and it took almost a month to assemble that. So uh, we're going to pick something that is reproducible for perhaps uh, the radio merit badge in a Boy Scout troop. The first thing we need to talk about is the antenna. Now interestingly enough, people have been using uh, everything from bed springs to radiators to wires hanging out the window to uh, just connecting right to the uh, screw in the middle of an AC socket and using these t with crystal radios with limited success. If we really want to have a good experience picking up signals with a crystal set, we need to have a decent antenna. If you work out the, the math on, uh, on antennas for the frequency band of 550 kilohertz, to about 1700 kilohertz, which is the AM broadcast band, which is what we're interested in picking up for this video. Then uh, we're going to use the same kind of antenna that the transmitting station uses, and that's called a Marconi antenna. The Marconi antenna is a quarter wave antenna. That is, its length is a quarter wavelength long, and it's worked against ground, so you need a ground with that type of antenna and between the earth and the antenna you produce a full dipole type of antenna that has substantial gain in the AM broadcast band if it's long enough. So what is long enough? Uh, a, a natural quarter wave at, at uh, 1700 kilohertz is going to be on the order of 130 or 140 feet long. So um, one reason we don't get good performance with these crystal sets is we're using wires that are only 10 feet or maybe just a few meters long. We really need to have a wire that's around 75 feet uh, to, to 120, 130 feet long. Some of that can be vertical and some of it can be horizontal. But if you can do an antenna outdoors that comes from the crystal set, goes up maybe 20 or 30 feet, and then goes out about 100 feet, that's going to be an excellent receive antenna for a crystal set. So we call that type of antenna an inverted L. And the inverted L really is the basis for an efficient antenna for crystal sets. Again, 75 feet to about 130 feet is ideal for the broadcast band. We should talk about grounding. Um, grounding uh, in the old days used to be a 10-foot metal rod, usually copper-coated, that was pounded into the ground. And uh, I remember as a kid I pounded something like that in because the book told me to. 
and that ground rod is still in that house today. Um, I don't think anyone will ever be able to remove that ground rod. It's there in perpetuity and uh, I think that uh, it still represents a good ground to this day. I don't think anybody's using it. Um, the electrical system, the plumbing in your house, all of these represent acceptable grounds for a crystal radio. Next, let's talk about uh, some of the parts that you use on a, uh, on a crystal set. This particular set uses a standard variable capacitor, a 365 picofarad variable capacitor. People may say these are rare or unobtainable. You don't have to use one exactly like this, but by rescuing one off an old AM table radio or buying one online, uh, you will pay some money for these, but they are being manufactured again. Uh, this is going to be uh, really uh, a great aid in making the radio useful and easy to tune. There have been crystal set designs which use just sliders uh, to tune. Um, they're rather complex to build. This is still the easiest way to tune a crystal radio and it gives you the best selectivity by using a variable capacitor. Uh, next let's talk about the coil itself. Uh, for this coil I used a piece of wood. Um, it's just a big, effectively a big dowel. It's a piece of, of spruce or pine that I found at the store and I simply chopped it and made it into a coil form. Of course, the other benefit of this is if the crystal radio doesn't work, this makes a handy uh, smashing tool. Just kidding about that, but uh, people have been building on wooden forms uh, for years. And the Morgan book, in fact, talks about using square stock and then lining the point of the square up so you can use sliders on just that point. Uh, a lot of people used to uh, put these in boiled paraffin wax in order to make them waterproof because if this absorbs a lot of water it will have more loss as a resonant coil. Uh, coating with polyurethane is probably the best idea today. So give this a coat of polyurethane, it will make a fine coil form. The other, the other benefit of using a wooden form is you can pound brads into it and you can wind your coils and solder them to the brads. It gives you a nice tapping points along the way. You can drill straight through the form and bring the, uh, the windings straight through the form as were, was done here. It makes a neat coil form. Good old piece of wood, easy way to go. Uh, winding the coil. Uh, we have thin wire, we have thick wire. Not really that important. Anything between number 20 wire and number 30 wire will be acceptable for winding the coils of a crystal set. Of course you can use PVC. PVC is easy to work with. Both white and this gray PVC make excellent coil forms. The old uh, toilet paper tube, the tissue paper tube has been used for crystal radios since the beginning of time and you can pretty that up uh, coat it with some polyurethane, maybe some poly paint, and it makes a neat looking coil form. Uh, a little bit hard to, to wind on. As you can see, this one's already deformed. That's because it's so flexible and it's not really thick enough. A thicker cardboard tube would be a better form to use for a crystal set. We can talk about uh, the diode detector. I would suggest that you simply use a uh, 1N34 or 1N70 series, 1N270, any of the germanium type diodes will work very effectively in the crystal set. Then we have the capacitor. I've got an old-fashioned postage stamp capacitor here. This is something that you would see on uh, crystal sets uh, crystal sets from the 40s uh, through the 50s and it's right at home here on this on this breadboard. By the way, this is breadboard construction. We're using a pine board. I put a little bit of stain on it, a little oil stain, just to make it look a little better. 
also to keep it from absorbing water. Um, uh, the wood can absorb water and again this adds loss to the circuit and the performance goes down. So you want to coat it with something that repels water. Finally, uh, and one of the most important parts of the set, the headphones. Now, uh, I've seen uh, crystal headphones, these single piece crystal headphones, a lot of people swear by them. I really am not a fan for a single headphone or a single crystal headphone. I like the old fashioned 2000 ohm headsets. These are available, you can find them in junk shops, you can find them on eBay. Uh, pay the money, clean them up. This is what you want to use with a crystal ray. I have next to me some antique Baldwin headphones. These are some high-end headphones that were used in the early 20s. They're called moving coil headphones. They are more sensitive than ordinary uh, magnet type headphones with, with discs. However, uh, finding these highly sensitive headphones, especially antique phones like this, is not what this is about. And the crystal radio will perform very well on ordinary 2000 ohm headphones, such as the consolidated and the, uh, all of the, the standard, standard headphone manufacturers of the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Any of them will work fine. If you have lower impedance headphones, such as 600 ohm headphones, you will have to use a transformer that converts a few thousand ohms down to 600 ohms to drive those phones. I call this a standard set because it really is an old circuit that's been around that evolved from the original loose coupler type of crystal sets. That is, it has a primary coil that's usually wound separately from the secondary coil. This is the primary, this is the secondary. The primary is connected to the antenna and ground. The secondary is connected to the variable capacitor and your detector diode. Notice how this particular coil has several taps. There's one, two, three, four taps. The reason that the secondary has taps on it it allows you to connect the diode down the coil to a lower impedance point on the coil so that the diode does not overload the tuned circuit and destroy its selectivity. It also allows you to connect to the top of the coil or down one tap for the upper part of the AM broadcast band or the lower part of the AM broadcast band. So it is kind of like a band switch and an impedance tap for the diode. It gives you both features. Also, notice how the primary has less turns than the secondary. When you build one of those Navy couplers from the early 1900s, they have huge coils. That's because they were designed for low frequency operation. Well below the broadcast band. And if you were to use one of those old sets on the AM broadcast band, you'd find that you would be only using a few turns of that gigantic coil you just wound. In other words, if you wound 2,000 turns on an oatmeal box, you might only use 12 or 14 turns total. So this is a much higher frequency set, so the coils become smaller. The, the number of turns on the secondary varies from around 60 turns to about 100 turns, depending on the, the, the wire you use and the size of the diameter of the coil. So that's the range that you're going to, to use. So that's why I like using taps. If I put 100 turns on here and tap every, say, 20 turns, that's going to give me a lot of flexibility with that coil. The same goes with the primary. You can tap that as well. We've got the coupling coil closest to the cold side of the tuned circuit. 
and this gives us the best selectivity because we're not loading down the high impedance part of the tuned circuit. We're introducing the signals on the low impedance side of the tuned circuit. So there's a little trick just in winding that coil, an improvement that's going to uh, give you some good performance with the crystal set. So we're taking the, uh, the signal off the air and we're detecting it and turning it into a, an audio signal of enough voltage that the headphones can turn it into mechanical movement that we interpret as sound in our ears and we can hear the station. Um, I can say that even with this very simple crystal set that I can pick up the New York stations which are several hundred miles away uh, faithfully every night with uh, my 120 foot inverted L antenna. The Golden Opportunity Sales Event has arrived at Prestige Lexus. Guests will include Congressman John Lewis, Harry Belafonte, Whoopi Goldberg, and more sponsored by Reliant Transportation. Watch the event live on the Smithsonian Channel Thursday night at 8 or tune into the webcast at cbsnewyork.com slash civil rights. WCBS News Time 922. I expect you're going to get very good performance as well. Uh, if you have a decent antenna, you're going to be able to pick up stations at night thousands of miles away with the crystal set. And during the way, or I'm sorry, during the day, you should be able to pick up two or three stations, maybe several stations, depending on how strong your uh, your AM, your local AM stations are, and how good your antenna is. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the uh, crystal set, building the crystal set, uh, or crystal radio, and I hope it's inspired you to put one together for yourself, prove it works get the antenna up in the air and start to pick up some signals for free because crystal sets are the foundation of all radio this gives you a foundational knowledge of building receivers the next step is going to be to build a high performance set and that's what we're going to get into in the next video